Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that was a bit loud. What happened there? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Breckland Planning for today. Let me just move my microphone out a bit. Okay, um, let me first of all go through our general housekeeping. Uh, first of all, um, fire exits. Uh, there are two quite clearly marked on, on this side of the room. Uh, there's another one at the end of the corridor where the lavatories are, and of course the entrance door where you came in. I have got no um, tests on for today, so if we hear the alarm, we will treat it as genuine and vacate the building. Um, also, sorry. Okay, so also um, your um, mobile phones and various devices, if you could make sure they're switched to silent. If they go off during the meeting, it's generally done as a fine to the chairman's charity, and it's not me as chairman of this committee, but it's chairman of the council. And his chosen charity this year is Papyrus, I believe that's all, just, and Mind. Papyrus and Mind. So your £10 will go at uh, £5 to each of those charities. So um, I'm quite happy if you carry on your business because we can make some money for his charity, which always looks good. Um, if I could tell you about the procedure as each item is called, um, I have a list of people who are registered to speak. If you'd like to come and sit on the right hand side, um, I will um, inform the presentation uh, from the officers to when you can speak and then the members. And while you have your allotted time, when you've finished, or, or according to my time, when you've finished, you, you will hear that bell, which will tell you to sum up. Now, sum up is not another 15 to, to 30 minutes. It's actually sum up that's, that sort of sentence so that we can uh, continue with the meeting. Now, let me introduce my team for today. On my left-hand side, I have Mike Horn, who's solicitor to the council. Um, at the far end, we have Simon Wood, our, our, our head honcho, who's got a marvellous title of development manager, something. Oh, there he is, director of planning and building control. I think you really should have a hat on with it on, then we can see it. Uh, on my right hand side, I have Rebecca Collins, who's our head of development management. We have at the far end, uh, our first officer for today, Gemma Manthorpe, who's a principal planning officer. At the back, we have Naomi Minto, who's Development Management Planner. Uh, we also have, oh, we would also have, she will join us, Becky Harris, who is our usher for today, who's a Planning Support Officer. And then also, of course, Julie Britton, who's our uh, Development Service Officer. Who, Democratic. Democratic Services. Oh, I've got a DV, it's not a DM. <laughs> Democratic Services Officer. And uh, she keeps us all in check and, and uh, makes sure everything is minuted. I'm not sure what was one, one or the other, but we at least know we've got her. That's the main thing. Okay, so we're going to start the meeting for today. <coughs> we'll start with item one is the minutes. I gather you've all read them and I have your authority to sign them off. Agreed? Thank you. Oh, Roger. Chairman, can I abstain because I wasn't here at the last meeting, please? That's fine. Thank you. Sorry, Roger. Councillor Attwell. Uh, Julie? Can I just pass that to you? Thank you. Okay, our next item, uh, I think it's to you, Julie, is apologies and substitutes, please. Thank you, Chairman. I have one apology from Councillor Crane and also Councillor Dale might be late as she's having car difficulties this morning. Oh, sorry. And we have Councillor Plummer in as Councillor Crane's substitute. get on no it's me right uh thanks councillor Plummer, for sitting in very good of you okay item three declarations of interest and various representations that have been received we will take them as each item is raised uh item four chairman's announcements um i'm i put for panel here which is this thursday i'm not sure i have confirmed that we've sorted yeah uh, councillor bowles and councillor martin Councillor Bowes and Councillor Martin. Thanks, guys, for, for, for moving your dates to, to accommodate that. Um, it's just we needed to move things back. So um, thanks very much. Uh, and then, of course, the most important thing that you all need to know is that our 26 sleeps to Christmas. All right, to Santa arriving. So you can get excited from, from today on. Um, OK, that's all I've got. Uh, requests to defer applications, please. We have none. Shake of the head. 
Um, item six, urgent business. We have no urgent business either. So we go to item seven on our agenda, which is the local plan update. And that's over to you, please, Simon. Thank you very much, Chairman. Just uh, a few matters to update to update members on at the moment. Just a reminder that the call for sites, um, which was extended, ends on the 1st of December. So if uh, members are aware of anybody who, who may be interested in putting sites forward, if they can go onto the website and complete the form and submit the, the, the relevant plan, uh, that, that would be great. The partial review, which went to Cabinet on the 21st of, uh, of this month, has now been submitted to the planning inspectorate and we are hoping to hear in due course the arrangement for the examination which we hope will be um, fairly early on and relatively short because it is from our point of view a relatively straightforward matter just to update in relation to the issues and options paper we had a, a, a member update um, a couple of weeks ago in relation to the issues and options paper and I would ask that any members that have comments to make on it do so again by the the 1st of December so that we can get the papers in in order fit to go to cabinet on the, the 9th of January. We are holding a session for parish and town councillors on the 20th of December at 4 p.m here at uh, Elizabeth House so um, it would be good to see as many representatives from parish and town councils at that session as possible. And we can talk them through the, the issues and options paper and get some, some feedback in terms of their thoughts. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Um, any questions at all, members? Uh, Councillor Kybird. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, that 20th of December meeting, um, will members of this committee be invited specifically? We, we had um, a member update in relation to this, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, um, for members to come and speak. It, it's not the intention for members to come to the, the parish and town council briefing, which will be a very similar event. Um, but there's nothing to stop members coming if they if they wish to do so. I think I would just ask that they let um, democratic services know so that we can have a little bit of control over over numbers. Councillor Attawell, please. Has the invite been sent to the town parishes? Because this is the first I've heard about it about the twentieth. I believe they have. Yes, and um, we have had some responses. Um, so I, I will double check, uh, and Julie's here as well, and we'll we'll go back. But I'm sure that they have been because we have had some responses back. So um, I, I don't know. We can we can look at resending. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, item eight is deferred applications. Could I ask my chief officer here if there are any deferred applications that are in need of depending? Thank you, Chairman. So any application that's been deferred from this planning committee, the officers are working hard to bring them back to the next available planning committee. Um, if members want specific updates on, on applications, then let me know and I'll get you those updates. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we knew uh, item nine now is our schedule of applications. And our first application is uh, item 9A and 9B at Rodham and Larling, 3PL 2022 which is full application, and 3PL 2022-0014, again, full application. And to speak, I have um, the chairman of the parish council, Sarah Gosling, I have Councillor William Nunn, who's the ward rep, and Rory Holbrook, who's the applicant. If you'd like to come and sit on the right-hand side, please. No, Mr Holbrook at the moment. Okay. Okay, thank you. Over to you then, please, Gemma. Thank you, Chairman. This is the application for a new office building with the relocation of some informal parking and the removing of an existing quarter cabin, which is currently used as offices that you'll see on a later slide. This is the site in the wider context. The outline that you can see before you does show, and I hope you can see my cursor here. 
This is the building to be demolished. This shows the access and the red line, which is the site as a whole. This plan shows you that the site is located within a designated employment allocation. And as per your report, the application is covered by policy EC03 of the Brickman Local Plan. Red line plan again also shows a blue plan. This application is the first of two applications on the site. So part of the blue line plan is the second application that I'll be presenting this morning. The red line plan here shows the site layout, which will show the creation of the new two-story office building to the front and shows here in the dotted lines, the office building, which is to be demolished. That's a better one that shows the access here, the car park for the officers here, and the new office building here, and the main road and the access coming through. That shows the elevations of the two story building, which will be at the front edge of the site. It will hold a prominent location within this area as it is quite forward to the site. The uh, application also details some ornamental park uh, planting to the front, which you can see illustrated on the plans. However, this can be conditioned to have full details come forward to ensure not only the ecological biodiversity of the site and the net gains, but also a more attractive form of development. Site photograph taken from across the road. You can see where the building will be located. It will be forward of the existing building you can see there in place where the cars are currently parked. You can see the site is currently used for, in par for parking, and you'll see this on the other photos as well. The Parish Council have submitted an in-depth objection to this application and the subsequent application, which cover points along both. One of the objections is regarding parking, and highways and the applicant and myself are currently in conversations regarding further information which has been requested to enable highways to deal with the application by conditions or hopefully no objections hopefully subject to the information. Highways have simply asked for further information to show that parking can be provided and showed delineated parking on the site to account for the additional persons for the officers. I said part of an office is being de demolished to allow for more parking. It's within your report that delegated authority is requested with regards to the highways conditions. And if members grant approval today, this will be on the grounds of authorities given to add highways conditions and subject to no objection from Norfolk County Council Highways following the receipt of revised information. This is the entrance to the site and you can just see here the section of building to be demolished and the existing parking as shown on the site plans. This is looking across the site and just clearly demonstrating again the site is used for parking and this is one of the concerns of the Parish Council and Norfolk County Council Highways are requesting further information. This is the access looking out of the site onto the road, just to demonstrate the width of it. We'll go back to the red line plan here. The Parish Council have also noted, among other things, lighting, hours of operation, both of which can be conditioned or within the example conditions within the report in front of you. Environmental Health have not requested any restrictions on these matters. However, given the details on the form and the fact that no lighting is submitted currently, they are reasonable and related to the application and it's the officer assessment that this will pass the tests for conditions to go on a planning application. As you can see and shown by the previous photo photographs and plans, the site is located within an existing industrial area. It is assessed that the principle of development is acceptable with regard to policy EC03 and the application is subject to no objections from Norfolk County Council Highways and the conditions referenced within the report. The application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we're going to take each one separately, yes? Yes. Okay, thanks to just join together here for me. Um, so I've got um, Councillor Nam. Would you like to go first or last? Okay, thank you. So we've got the Chairman of the Parish Council, Sarah Gosling. You have three minutes. Hello, my parish council opposes this application for the reasons as seen in the case reports. As stated on the reason for the planning committee consideration, the application is significant for local people. We thank the case officer for the numerous conditions on, which the, on their recommendations, 
which seek to address a number of the issues and concerns which our parish council raised. We welcome the opportunity to clarify the operation on the entire site. It will allow the entire Rowdham industrial estate area to be consistent in terms of what is and isn't allowed. Currently, the main site for uh, Holbrook's operations does not have specific planning conditions in place due to the age of the area. Presently, there is informal and unauthorised parking by Holbrook staff outside of their boundary, outside of that red line in a place which compromises the existing highway safety of the site and surrounding businesses, seen on there to the right-hand side. Sadly, no increase in parking places has been included in their new designs to prevent this in future. The ad hoc site is not part of their land. The footprint of the new building drastically exceeds that that is being demolished. It will reduce parking availability rather than increase it. We kindly request the addition of the restricted use of any external tannoy and loudspeaker during office hours, as per conditions seen on other businesses on the same estate. The application states that access to the office and site will be 24 hour, as, as drivers may return at any time. This is of great concern that it gives opportunity to increase operations beyond those under planning condition. We kindly request that a condition for the receipt of vehicles back to the depot does not include for loading or unloading outside of permitted hours. We have considered both applications together as they are from the same company on the same site and to expand the existing operations of the same business. It is refreshing not to see yet another retrospective application from this particular site. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Nunn, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm going to be very concise. I, I am very pleased these two applications have come before committee because, as Sarah said, we've had uh, almost constant retrospective applications coming from this. So I'm pleased that you have the opportunity now to put the conditions in place to hopefully regularise what is going on on this site. I think the key things for me are around the speakers and the tannoy to ensure that the, the residents who live actually relatively close to the site uh, on the right hand side as you look up at that map are uh, some residential properties um, to make sure the tannoys actually only operate during working hours and are directional make sure the operating hours as sarah said are actually during the operating hours i think it's a very very smooth move to say we allow vehicles to come back 24 hours a day because ultimately that means we're going to work 24 hours a day um, I know they do a lot of work for the railways, so they work through the night, so lorries will come back, load, unload. So I'd, I'd like to see that condition strengthened. Um, and, and I think they're the two key things. Sarah highlighted the, the traffic. We, we already know these uh, people have to park on the highway. There isn't sufficient parking on site. As Sarah again pointed out, by extending the size of the building, they aren't actually extending the size of the site, so they're reducing public par uh, work parking both for lorries and for, for vehicle um, cars. And that, that will only, as we see, expand the use of the highway for, for their parking. So we'd like somehow, and I, I don't know how we regularize that because there is no restriction on the highway. So I guess there's no way that you can actually prevent people from just parking all the way along the highway. Um, but I guess it's just worth flagging. Uh, and I think they're the key, key things I'd like you to consider when you look at the conditions on this, because as a company who has in the past um, dare I say, done their own thing. I'd like as best we can to put conditions in to regularise what they're doing and to give our officers the opportunity to uh, hold them to account when they do things wrong for the community. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to say, I think Gemma did mention it, but just for members' clarification, there is a second application on this site to follow um, your vote on this application. So just to be really clear, this application is for the new office building, and then we have a subsequent application coming for new industrial units. Members, you may or may not agree with me, but therefore I think the matters of loading and unloading aren't relevant to the office application, which you are considering now before you, nor are the matters of the speakers and tannoy, in my view, aren't relevant to this office application and therefore you know we will have the opportunity to consider those matters with the next application and um, the other point i'd like to make chairman is um we cannot 
members, you're already aware, but we cannot use these applications to put right the issues with the existing operations of the site. We can only consider these applications on their own merits and the, and the additional impact these applications may create. Um, so in that regard, I'd ask you when you're thinking about conditions and impacts, that you think about the conditions and impacts that this development, i.e. at the minute, the new office building is likely to generate and those issues related to that that are clearly set out in the officer's report and not the issues that the existing operation may generate because you can't use this application to put right matters with the previous application and as the parish council have clearly pointed out that is uh, that isn't the, the current site isn't regulated in any way by current planning permissions um, thank you very much chairman thank you it's open to questions from members um councillor plummer please and then councillor atterwell uh, thank you mr chairman and um, can i ask the officer as it is an industrial, is got industrial use, so it's not agricultural or nothing. And so we're talking about historic usage rather than plan and permission usage. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Does that make sense? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I think I've confused everyone. So, <laughs> which is common. Um, so um, at the minute, so put aside the industrial units, which we'll consider second, and we'll have a completely separate presentation on that and, a, a, and speakers and, and a vote. At the minute, you are only considering a new office building, the relocation of informal vehicle parking and the removal of existing porter cabin for office building. What I am saying is there is and you've seen from the location plan in front of you there's a depot that this site is part of a wider site and part of those operations will continue as part of those wider sites so you can only consider the office building in principle so as Gemma's pointed out this is an allocated employment site under policy ECO3 um, that allows for B1, B2 and B8 but obviously it's not B anymore it's E class but um, those allows those be used classes as set out in the policy on a designated employment site. So what we're saying to you members is the principle of development is established by policy ECO4. And then we're asking you to consider the impacts of that office building only of which we appreciate there um, is a parking issue that we are trying to resolve with the applicant that we believe there is sufficient space on the site to park vehicles for those offices only. Does that help? Thank you. Councillor Atwell, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, I think the tannoy is applicable to the office setup because if there's people in the office, I'm sure they're going to have a speaker or something attached to the side of that office building screaming at the yard foreman to come down and talk to somebody in the office. So I think that definitely should be a, a condition. Um, with the construction of this new office facility, and we'll come on to the, the industrial unit, is it anticipated that there's gonna be an increase in employees? Is the idea of this to increase the employment on the site? The application form states there'll be, there is currently, and fair enough, this is the application form for this red line boundary site, there's currently 22 employees full-time on site. There's been no indication of further employees and that box has been left blank now normally that box is filled in because further employment is beneficial and is seen as a positive thing especially within an, in a employment allocation so the assumption would be it's going to maintain the status quo or that would have been put forward as a positive but as i said on this red line site the application form states there are 22 employees currently full-time But have we asked the question? The, blo the, the box is blank, but have officers asked that question? Because to me, that, that's quite fundamental. Um, I'm not sure whether, I, I hear what you're saying about putting a condition on here regarding the parking, but um, if there's already issues with parking on the site, and you would think if this company is investing in this site with, with new buildings, that, that is going to increase the employment on the site, You'd like to think so that's why they're doing it um to build their business then that's going to exacerbate the parking situation so i think that's a really fundamental question 
if we've got cars parked all along the, the main road at the moment anyway, I don't know what, I'm not familiar with the site, but I don't know what the visibility is like getting in and out of the site. If you've got cars parked along, along the main highway, we can't do anything about the existing situation. But if we're, if there's a new facility that's going to be built here, um, surely we can't be given permission for something where we're saying we're just going to let them park the cars on a main highway. I mean, that, that wouldn't be acceptable on any other application that we we receive, we would always look at the parking situation, the off-road parking. Um, to me, I just wonder whether we've jumped the gun a little bit here, um, given permission with all these conditions and not having all the facts at our disposal. So I'd just like some clarity on that, please. If I can come back on that, this application is subject to no objection from Norfolk County Council of Highways. They have asked for the additional information with regards to parking spaces. The application states there's 40 spaces currently available on site and that there will be 40 spaces available once the office development is built. So that's 40 cars available, as I said, within the red line plan. Norfolk County Council Highways have asked for those to be demonstrated and delineated so that they can assess the application. The floor plan of the office, while the numbers aren't specifically given, the floor plan of the office is assessed by Norfolk County Council Highways with regards to the amount of prospective persons to be on site and is there enough parking for prospective persons it's actually usually done by a square meterage and Norfolk County Council standards have now increased slightly to allow for certain uses get certain amount of spaces per square meterage and that's what Norfolk County Council will be looking at and we don't have a current consultation response from County Council Highways and as such, this would be subject to their no objection and any conditions that they wanted to apply to the application. Could could I just ask before getting letting Roger come back? Um, could I just ask the uh, twenty two spaces and sorry, forty spaces for twenty two cars is easy to calculate that there's left over, but is that's for the office? There are also drivers as well of the vehicles so they'll they will be taking up those other spaces is that correct which is why we have some outside on the road i will be honest the current setup with regards to the parking it's i've been on site it's informal parking which is quite tight to put it mildly i have to say when i when I visited, but that is only a snapshot in time, so it is definitely not indicative of what it's like the rest of the time. There wasn't a single car parked on the road. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Atwell, please. Okay, so my, thank you for chairing. You, you, you've asked part of the question I was going to ask. Um, so I think you said there's 22 employees. Is that 22 employees just in the offices? Are you going to tell me when we look at the application for the industrial units that there are more employees in those in those units or is it 22 across the whole site because i'm i'm sitting here now thinking i really don't have the full picture on what's going on here with the number of employees the parking if we've got 40 spaces and there's 22 people you're telling me work on the site then there shouldn't be anybody parking on the highway clearly if people are parking on the highway that suggests to me that there's an issue and there's a lot more people on the site than there is parking spaces. I'm, I'm, I really would like a bit more information. I'm, I'm uneasy to get uneasy about giving permission for this with only half of the picture. And this is what Norfolk County Council are assessing. At the present time, the application is relating to this bit portion of the site and says 22 employees. As my photo showed, there is quite a considerable number of cars parked on there. I'm afraid I'm not privy to where those persons worked or what those 22 persons are doing on that section of the site. And the Norfolk County Council are assessing the employment figures for the next application, which is the other part of the site that you'll see the red line at the rear. The employment numbers for that are different so that you're aware to the 22 that have been cited on application 0013. Can I ask, is fit jumping the from one application to the other slightly? Is there is there formalised parking on that on that industrial site part for the employees of that section? 
I only visited the site for AA13 and AA14, mm. and the parking was informal and ad hoc yeah. from a non highways so non professional perspective. Non formalized at the moment. Okay, we might need to look at the second application to, to discover when there's formalized parking. No, they are, they are to a degree slightly separate, although they're next door to each other. <laughs> right, Councillor Atwell. Are they not the same business? Yeah. So if they're the same business, again, I asked the question, we've got a blank box on an yeah. application form that doesn't tell me exactly how many employees are on the whole site. You're telling me I've got part of the puzzle there. I've got parking space for 40 spaces. Um, so that bit I know. What I don't know is exactly how many employees there are employed by this company. And clearly, if they're parking on the highway, it suggests to me that 40 spaces isn't enough. That's the bit I don't know, how many employees are on the site. And I think we should have asked that question. I said that will come to Norfolk County Council's assessment, which is outstanding, is the, the numbers of parking spaces required based on square meterage to do with the office building, any conditions that they request, and delineation of the 40 spaces that the application states they can provide, or a number that highways request. So the application is based is recommended subject to highways comments. Thank you. Um, can I just hold you there for a moment? And can I take Councillor Kyber and then Councillor Wilkinson, please? Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, does the number of parking spaces include an appropriate number of disabled parking spaces? And looking forward, does it include any electric vehicle charging points? Thank you. The application currently doesn't show any delineated spaces. And that's one of the things that Norfolk County Council Highways have asked for. They've asked for quite literally lines on a plan showing how many parking spaces are they of the correct width are they in places where there's correct turning they've not objected which indicates that they think that the parking standards can be satisfied EV charging points I'm going from my memory I don't believe that Norfolk County Council did ask for those this application has been with the local planning authority for quite some time and as such the parking standards have changed with County Council but they're being more um, lenient in the application of current standards, which requires EV charging. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the, 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 the road, uh, Chairman, is that um, public through road for general public? Or not? So it's not a, just a road serving the site. There is issues where there could be through traffic. And the environmental said they got no issues. Um, have they looked at the site as generally as a noise factor, including the um, tannoy and obviously works what go on the site? Has that, have they ever done an assessment on that? And were they told about the tannoy? Uh, the application has been assessed based on the information submitted. I do agree with Rebecca that I'm not au okay with buildings that are used as officers having tannoys and I think that normal assessment would have been done based on an office building and the use class that has been applied for on the application form so whether they've assessed that I'm not privy to but I would assume not but as Rebecca said members can put a condition on if they see fit to restrict <laughs> or no tannoy a loudspeaker can be erected to be heard externally on the building without the prior written approval of the local planning authority and then if the applicant would like a tannoy it would come back to us and environmental health would be consulted on that basis specifically thank you i, th I think in light of of the fact that um there are a few unanswered questions um i, I find it very difficult to put to members um for you to make um a, a decision on this so um, I, I would like to put forward for deferment. Uh, I need a seconder, and I think that's Councillor Atwell. And then could I put that to a vote, please, that we defer this item for further information? Um, and those against? And any abstentions? Councillor Martin, I'm looking at you. Oh, which one was that for? Are you? A, oh, the first one, thank goodness for that. Good, thank you. Um, 
Uh, go on then, Councillor Gilbert, but keep it brief, please. Thank you, Chairman. It's about the tannoy. I mean, we're talking about ancient technology here. I mean, with modern technology, anybody who's working in the yard should be able to have us you know, have a, a two-way thing on them. And I think the idea of a tannoy is Victorian almost. <laughs> that was going on. Councillor Kittle Morris, and that's it. I'm not taking anyone else. Chairman, in view of the, the uh, deferment of this application, I would suggest that we defer the, the other application on the same site. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get confused. Uh, I think we were confused also with, with looking at 22 uh, um, workers in the new, new building and actually um, workers off the other site coming and parking on the original site as well the site we've just been discussing so there's a there's a kind of crossover there which i think we need to determine and i i, I would like these two applications to come back at the same time next time yes they certainly will which is what i was referring to the fact that there's a few unanswered questions okay thank you thanks very much members i do apologize but you want to defer defer, the defer both items yeah well, your first vote was on that one. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll take another vote then to defer the other item as well, which is a 0014. Show of hands to defer that as well, with along with it. That's unanimous. Thank you. That dots all the I's and crosses all the T's. Thank you very much. We're going to go on to item 39C, 3PL 2022-0517. Again, a full application at Thetford. I have uh, Barbara Tullett. Please, who's, uh, uh, you, if you can come and sit on the right hand side, Barbara Teller, who's an objector, uh, Thomas Kilvert and Stephen O'Connell, who's the agent and applicant, and Councillor Jane James, who's the ward rep. If you'd like to come and sit on the right hand side, please. Get you all sat down. Okay, and uh, when you're ready, Naomi, that'll be all up to you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so this application seeks planning permission for the construction of a drive-through restaurant and associated works. The proposed occupant is Burger King. The proposed unit would comprise of approximately 280 square meters across two floors a surfacing and refuse yard is also proposed to the rear. This would be enclosed by vertical tantalized timber planks mounted on steel horizontal support rails. So I'll just run through the slides. This is the location here. You can see the application site there in red and the wider retail park there with the car parking. And there it is again, you can see Lime Kiln Lane runs around the entire site, and that is how it is accessed. This is the existing site plan. You can see Halfords there, one side of the site and Farm Foods and Jollies on the other side. And you can see the proposed development there, the proposed layout, which shows where the building will be. And the proposed elevations. And the proposed floor plans showing the two stories. <coughs> and these are photos of the site. This is looking onto the retail park as you access it. This is the actual application site. You can see the existing residential development there to the rear. And this is looking in the other direction towards the retail park. And this is a view along Lime Kiln Lane to the back where you can see the um, development in relation to existing residential development. And this is the roundabout, the Norwich Road with Lime Kiln Lane, which uh, has <coughs> been the subject of highways comments. And back to the location plan. So in terms of consultation responses, um, there has been um, an objection from Thetford Town Council on various grounds, including highway safety and amenity concerns. 
There hasn't been an objection from North, Norfolk County Council Highway, so I'll go into that in a minute. Um, there's been no objection from the environmental health officers and no objection from contaminated land officers subject to conditions. In terms of uh, local representations, we've received eight representations which have um, raised objections on various grounds, including overdevelopment of the site, highway safety concerns, um, antisocial behaviour, public health concerns, unsuitable location and amenity concerns. Uh, we've also received an objection from the local ward rep board representative objection to the proposal on various grounds, including highway safety concerns and amenity impact concerns, such as increased noise, unpleasant odours, um, refuge storage, vermin, litter, antisocial behaviour. In terms of the principle of the development, the application was assessed in accordance with policy ECO5, the Breckland Local Plan, which relates to town centre retail strategy and states that designated town centres are suitable for any town centre uses as defined by na national policy. The MPPF defines town centre uses as including restaurants and drive through restaurants. Therefore, the application is considered to be compliant with policy ECO5 of the Breckland Local Plan and the principle of the development is therefore accepted. In terms of the impact of the proposal on the design and character and appearance of the surrounding area. The application was assessed in accordance with policy Gen 2 and COM 1 of the Breckland Local Plan. The proposed unit would be of similar height to the existing units to the east and west of the site. The modern design and use of red brick would match the adjacent retail units. In addition, in respect of crime prevention and management of litter, it was recommended that the proposed bins to be used should be fire resistant. It is noted that the proposed bins would be located within a secure timber fence compound to the rear of the building, and it is recommended that the bins themselves have locks installed. In respect of the proposed building, it is recommended that all ground floor windows and doors are fitted with laminated glass. This not only protects the occupants against accidental breakages, such as vehicles throwing up stones or antisocial behaviour, but also against ease of access. Whilst the application details do not appear to include the provision of CCTV, it is recommended that if CCTV is to be installed at this location, it should cover the car parking area as well as the building. In light of those considerations, the application is considered to be compliant with the requirements of policy COM1 and GEN2 subject to the provision of conditions. In terms of highway safety considerations, the application was assessed in accordance with policies COM1 and TR2 of the Breckland Local Plan, as well as having consideration to paragraphs 110 and 111 of the MPPF. The applicant submitted a transport statement um, in, in support of the application. The local highway authority advised that a number of vehicles overrun the existing mini roundabout with the associated carriageway markings subject to wear. That was shown in the photographs. You can just see it in the uh, top above the blue line there of that <laughs> location plan. Um, as such, the local highway authority um, have advised that the applicant will be required to provide minor improvements to the roundabout. This would be through the provision of a central dome to discourage vehicles from overrunning, straight lining the roundabout and improve better lane discipline. The offsite works would need to be delivered via section 278 agreement and the precise delivery mechanism would be determined as the works are brought forward. Whilst the local highway authority acknowledged that the proposals would result in reduction of on-site vehicular parking to 49 spaces, they also accepted that the proposal includes provision of additional covered cycle parking for staff visitor use. They also advised that the existing car park is underutilized and that the proposed parking levels are, un are acceptable. This is due to the level of shared parking available for all four units, the options available for sustainable tra travel and the likely linked trips with the nearby businesses. In regard to servicing, it was advised that sufficient opportunity will still be available either 
by vehicles reversing into the shared delivery bay or pulling onto the remaining area adjacent to Lime Kiln Lane to safely serve the site. On that basis, the local highway authority raised no objections subject to conditions. In terms of amenity, uh, amenity impact, the application has been assessed in accordance with policy COM3. And it was considered that given the siting, height and intervene and distances to the existing dwellings to the south, the proposed building would not give rise to any unacceptable loss of amenity for occupants of those dwellings when having regard to overlooking visual dominance and overshadowing considerations. With respect to implications on neighbouring residents through noise and disturbance caused by additional activity and surfacing to the rear of the site, it is noted that the area along Lime Kiln Lane is already used to access and service the existing Jollies and Halfords retail units and is therefore subject to an existing level of activity. Noise and other forms of disturbance were also considered by the environmental health team who initially objected to the proposals on the basis that insufficient information had been su submitted for consideration. Their main concerns related to how odour, pest control, litter, waste and noise would be addressed. The applicant has since submitted additional information, including a specification and EMAQ report to address odour concerns and an email to address other matters of concern raised by the environmental health. And upon reconsultation with them, they've raised no objections subject to the inclusion of conditions. The application is therefore considered to be compliant with um, amenity considerations. Um, they have satisfactorily addressed nutrient neutrality considerations. And in conclusion, the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions and the applicant entering into a Section 278 agreement. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, it's opening to questions at the moment. Councillor James, would you like to go first or second? Um, no. First or last, sorry. Sorry? Last. Of course you can. Right, so we have uh, Barbara Tullock, please, who's an objector, uh, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my name is Barbara Tullis and I live at 37 Magdalene Street, which backs onto the Lime Kiln Lane service area. The proposed development site is to the left of the entrance to the Lime Kiln Lane shopping complex. At present, there are three shops with sufficient parkings for their needs. However, there's a small supermarket as the road turns into the Audi car park, which has a charity shop next to it. The supermarket has a couple of parking spaces, so the customers park on both sides of the road alongside farm foods and on the bend, creating a hazard for the Audi entrance. This is a particular problem on the busiest days of the week. This area has a litter problem with packaging, empty alcohol bottles, cans and items left for the charity shop, often strewn along the grass verge and shrub border next to the farm food shop. Behind farm foods, there's a cage in which this kept the rubbish, they keep their rubbish container. This cage has to be kept locked at all times, other people, it's accessed and the contents strewn around the surrounding area. The grass verge and the area to the side of farm foods is also used as a toilet area, even during the day. There's a problem in the area with rats due to the uh, units that back onto the Grove Lane. And I often spot them during daylight hours, they're that, that bold. Magdalene Street itself is a busy thoroughfare with one end being a single lane traffic due to the street parking. The houses that back onto Lime Kiln compete for parking spaces with the customers of the pub and the mobile, uh, the visiting mobile bank. And therefore they all, most of them park on the service road behind their own properties. The delivery lorries are of substantial size. And one of my concerns is if it, uh, amend, uh, uh, um, amendments are done to the mini roundabout, that they will change their route and come up the Magdalene Street to avoid that route is because um, it, you know, they need quite a big turn in circle. Um, the delivery vehicle for the farm foods reverses into the bay quite adequately. Um, but if the proposed uh, fence line is changed, that will restrict the unloading for jollies as it will come right up to their loading bay 
and create problems with their forklift truck. And Halfords, I mean, the, the size of their lorry is quite fast, really. Um, and that's going to, I can see them using the service road rather than the, the service area and cause congestion in that area. Jollies keep their seven rubbish bins in front of the fence line and they be, have to move behind the store nearer to the unloading area and the houses, um, again, causing, causing issues for unloading. Um, once the shops have shut in the evening, the area is quiet. I mean, they, they were shut at seven o'clock, but with Burger King, obviously their, their um, trading hours are going to go well into the evening, causing um, noise and um, nuisance to the, to the neighbours. Um, the developers intend to reduce the number of parking spaces by nine. I can only presume that the parking service will be carried out on a quiet day of the week to say the car park is underutilised. The position of the new park, uh, disabled parking bays will mean the occupants of those bays having to reverse into the main stream of traffic, also causing a hazard. Um, and with additional cars coming through the drive through, this uh, adds to the existing parking issues on the site. If this application is approved, the residents of Magdalene Street will suffer an increase in noise and disturbance to the rear of their properties and additional litter and antisocial behaviour with the unwelcome addition of cooking smells. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I've got Thomas Kilbert now, who's the agent. Uh, also, Stephen O'Connell is here as well as the applicant, who's here for answering questions only. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, the application for a drive through restaurant comes to you before uh, following positive collaborative working with officers, resulting in no objections from technical consultees and a recommendation for approval. The site is within the designated town centre of Thetford, and so in policy terms, the principle of development is acceptable. We understand that there are local concerns in relation to the restaurant. We are confident that the development would operate without giving rise to these concerns. The operator, Adol Group, a family business trading since 1969, successfully operates over 175 similar restaurants across the country, adhering to strict brand uh, standards of their global franchise uh, partners. In terms of parking and congestion, there is no objection from the local highways authority. The highways officer acknowledges that the existing Retail park is underutilized and that the parking levels are acceptable. In particular, drive through restaurants such as this benefit from a significant number of linked trips when customers divert to the site following a visit to another destination. The drive through option also reduces uh, parking car demand as customers have the option to use the drive through rather than sit in the restaurant and use the car park. The Highways Authority has requested that improvements are carried out in relation to um, Norwich Road Midi Roundabouts, and this can be delivered by uh, Planning Commission. Servicing, which only takes place every few days, will be conditioned to avoid uh, peak times. The application was also supported with a detailed noise assessment, which has been agreed with the Council of Advisors on Noise. Conditions will be attached to any Planning Commission to control the operation of the unit including a restriction for noise levels to not exceed three decibels above background noise level on the boundary of the nearest affected residential property. This will ensure residents are protected. Bins will be provided on site and bin storage is provided in secure timber fence compounds. The operators of the restaurants have litter picking regime, which means regular litter picks are undertaken on the site and surrounding area. We fully support the officer's recommendation as set out in their reports that the principal use is appropriate within the town centre and at its location on established retail park. The development will create uh, 40 new uh, jobs in both full and part-time roles and the use will bring more trade into the town centre. We therefore suggest that members agree with your officer's recommendation and grant planning permission for this proposed new drive through restaurants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor James, please. Uh, three minutes also. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. 
Firstly, I need to state that I am not against another fast food out there opening in Thetford and welcome the additional jobs that will accompany any well thought through investment in our town. However, many of my residents and I share the view that this is not an appropriate location for this specific application. MPPF Section 8 requires planning decisions to aim to achieve healthy, inclusive and safe places which enable and support healthy lifestyles and access to healthier food. The locating of a fast food outlet within 300 metres of a school, a mere two minute walk away, is contrary to the fight against obesity. Given that in 2017, one third of children aged two to 15 were overweight or obese. There is also the socioeconomic aspect to consider with any significant money being spent each year on the treatment of obesity and diabetes. And obesity rates are highest for children from the most deprived areas, sadly, that we have very close by. The considerations in the transport statement fail to acknowledge that the restaurant element of the proposal will attract a high number of destination customers, as is seen with current drive through and dine in facilities. Where these facilities currently exist in the town, there has been additional parking allocated, not a reduction in parking as proposed in this scheme. There is also the failure to consider the growth area of home delivery services for takeaway food and the provision for parking for them. The safety of the proposed layout is questionable with the current site plan showing a disabled parking space almost directly opposite the already restrictive entrance exit from the site from Lime Kiln Lane North Minor. There appears to be very little consideration to traffic management on the site itself. Reversing in and out of these spots would cause collision risk as users of the rest of the site attempt to navigate the remaining car park or gain entry to the drive through the loading access to the retail unit currently occupied by Jollies is also compromised by the proposed acoustic timber fence with factually not enough space being retained for them to safely operate their forklift truck. In relation to the proposed new shared delivery bay, no consideration has been given to the additional noise that will be created by the movement of product from the back of the delivery vehicle, which will reverse in according to the swept pass analysis provided to the rear of the unit currently occupied by Halfords. There is also the additional risk of associated manual handling of product as access is restricted when the delivery vehicle is in this new bay. When I originally called in the um, apologies, when I originally called in the application, there were no pest control measures within this application, and there have been issues as previously mentioned in relation to this. The Breckland Local Plan Policy CMO3 Protection of Amenity states that development will not be permitted which causes unacceptable effects on the residential amenity of neighbouring occupants. There was not enough evidence provided at the time of writing the original call-in to assure residents that their amenity would not be adversely impacted from odour, pests, light, light pollution and noise. I will close there, Chairman, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's open to questions from members, and I've first of all got Councillor Gilbert, then Councillor Atterwell. Oh, I'm green. <laughs> all right, thank you, Chairman. I'm a little bit confused on this in some respects. Uh, if you can bring up the site plan for me, please. There's, there's, there's mention of four businesses on the site, and I can only see two. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to establish. Uh, and, yeah, right. So there's two two businesses were mentioned at uh, the, you know, the, the applications. You said there are four. There's Jollies and Farm Foods and there's Halfords as the right, third one. Right. Um, the other thing is, this is down as a drive-through restaurant. Uh, can you bring up, you've just gone past it, the seat, the floor plans. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's tables and chairs there. So it's not the drive through, is it? Not just exactly my exactly through my chairman's uh, briefing mm -hmm. was it should have said drive through slash restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's drive through restaurant. Yeah. But it's, it's all that we've heard today from the applicants is that this is a drive through and therefore reducing the car parking spaces on site is not a problem. I would suggest that this is not just a drive-through, it is a restaurant with a drive-through facility. And that what they are doing actually is reducing the number of car parking spaces on that site to, to allow this 
to be developed. So I'm not not very happy to look with that. I'm not very happy with the with the definition, and I think we should take that into account. And by doing this, reducing the number of car parking spaces to build a restaurant. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Atwell, please. Chairman, uh, I've got one question, then I'd like to follow up once I get the answer, if that's possible. Um, what um, what work's been done with the local safer neighbourhood team? Have we had any input from the police regarding this application? Are they generally supportive of it? Do they consider that there's likely to be any any increase in antisocial behaviour with that application? Naomi? I've not had a consultation response from the police. They've not been consulted on it. There we go. Okay, thank you for the answer. Um, <clears throat> I just want to talk about policy Gen 02 for a second, if I can, Chairman, because I'm sure our council solicitor will agree with me that that is a subjective policy, it's not prescriptive. I just want to read out a couple of bits from that because I think the ward rep makes a very powerful argument as to why this application should be refused. And I think that this is going to come down to a subjective view, whether we think that's going to enhance the area or not. So Gen 02, for the benefit of the audience, really, um, the council will require high quality design in all development within the district that one, respects and is sensitive to the character of the surrounding area and makes a positive architectural and urban design contribution to its context and location. Two, contrib contributes positively to the public realm and public spaces, protecting high levels of amenity and quality of life making, Breckland, life making Breckland an attractive, successful and vibrant place for residents, workers and visitors. And three, creates high quality, safe and sustainably designed buildings, places and streets and maximises connectivity and through development into the surrounding areas, including provision of high quality and safe pedestrian and cycle routes. I could go on, uh, um, there's some text at the end, but generally I'm not happy that this really um, meets the test for promoting high quality design in a town centre location where we've got um, several domestic properties in the immediate location. So for me, I, I'm, I would want to see this application refused, um, but I think on that basis that I don't think it meets the test of Gen 02 would be my objection to the application. I don't think it, I don't think it enhances the surrounding okay. area. I think it seems at the beginning of your statement, you um, invited the solicitor to take part, so I think it's only fair that he um, contributes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I do agree with Councillor Atwell that it is a um, subjective uh, uh, policy, but m might I suggest that Gen 02, um, as its title uh, implies, is dealing with um, the actual design of the building. Um, and uh, unless I'm mistaken, your concern is more to do with the use rather than per se the design of the building itself. So I'm not sure that Gen02 um, is the correct peg uh, to hang your concern on. Okay, thank you. I'm going to hold you for, for a moment because I've got quite a few speakers. I don't mind taking you at the, um, back at the end. Um, Councillor Kybird, please, who is actually, is, I'm not sure if this is your ward, but you're our Thetford member. Um, no, it is a uh, walking distance from my house. Um, one question uh, amongst many, um, has the peak traffic flow been modelled? Because if there's more than 10 cars in the queue, you'll get gridlock on the entire site. Yeah. Okay. New roundabout, sir. Are you wishing to comment? Could I say comment briefly? And um, so, so your question, just in terms of the um, flows of traffic. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so our application is supported by a transport um, statement, and that has found that um, there won't be any adverse impacts. They 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 model 
traffic flows um, during various times of the day and found that there wouldn't be any adverse impacts on, on, on uh, traffic volumes. I think that the other important point to say is that, and I think it's um, come up already in discussions, is, is uh, drive-throughs not as a whole we found that um across the country when we when we model this is that 90 percent are linked trips so most of the time people aren't just going to a a, a drive through as a as a uh, single destination they're going for other purposes and, and stop on the way so in terms of again in terms of impact on on, on traffic flows i think that's also important to note thank you uh councillor clark uh, thank you, Chairman. I've just got one, that, well, a couple of questions. First, the um, declare that I have used uh, fast food and uh, drive-through outlets uh, and uh, made most welcome use of them um, in Deerham and elsewhere. Um, I've got one observation is that whilst some statutory consultees, in this case, we've got environmental health and highways, haven't raised objections. There's a difference between objections and concerns, and obviously, um, the officer considers, as do possibly the consultees, that the concerns are mitigated or overridden by the conditions. I've got the first question to the applicant. One of the comments, which I think you partly answered to Councillor Attawal, was around journeys. Um, your comments or um, statements that people are making link journeys, that they're not going specifically to go in and get some fast food and out again is that borne out from operations of you know the company elsewhere um you know similar similar conditions um or is it was it based on um having a fast food outlet which may be in the middle of um unrelated products in other words you're not going to say you know a fish and chip place and a burger place etc but there's a mixed mixed retail outlet so that's the first question for you, and then I've got a question for the ward rep. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yeah, so in relation to that 90%, which has also been quoted in the officer's reports, um, and that's from our, our highways assessments, um, they find when that statistic that they've used, um, that they found with, with drive throughs across, that specifically related to drive throughs, uh, that 90% of those are, are linked trips rather than kind of your single destination. So that's uh, across drive throughs across the country rather than specifically rated to to my uh, client's sites or client's operations i've got a question for the ward rep um you've obviously read the um sorry about that council joan um i've re read the um conditions do you think that the um conditions um override those two objections which the concerns of the town council around amenity and highways issues thank you thank you chairman for the opportunity to respond to that um i think really for the benefit of the residents that will probably be watching this um my question would be to the team what reassurance can this committee provide you know should you be minded to approve the application that a robust process will be in place to ensure those planning conditions are that are recommended are enforced um, because neighbouring residents have voiced their concerns that given that correspondence displayed on the planning website clearly quotes the agent as not considering pest control measures as a planning consideration, which is obviously then in the opposition to the previously mentioned CMO3. What reassurances could those residents have, I think, is the more important question. Thank you very much. I'm just um, having some a clar clarification from the solicitor, please. Uh, I think, as um, uh, Councillor has just stated, uh, COMO3 is, is the relevant policy here more, more than... Um, uh, yeah. okay. okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Clark. Um, uh, Councillor Kittle-Morris, please. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you, Chairman. Um, I note on, on from the report there is, there is no objection or any comment from the two neighbouring uh, businesses or the three neighbouring businesses uh, as to uh, any any um, impingement on their business in terms of deliveries and etc. So I take it that there is nothing uh, there. Um, 
I think if we we look look at the the, 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 the situation with the, which the ward rep has brought up about existing rat problems, um, I, I, I guess from what um, Rebecca Collins said earlier on, we, we can't um, address that problem with this application. Um, the other thing is that, that, that the only thing that I think I think that the conditions that have been put on uh, on, on the re on the report are are good enough to mitigate the, the noise and the smell. Um, the only thing that, that I I note in some uh, fast food restaurants in other places, a condition has been put on that they, they should uh, look at litter within 100 metres of their own um, outlet. And I would suggest that if we do pass that, that we do actually ask them to clear up any, any, any stuff that is uh, left locally. Uh, I, mean, I, I know from, from, from fact that um, depending on the speed limit, if you go by car, your, your litter goes out between three and five kilometres away from the fast food restaurant, but uh, that's a bit too far away from, uh, for this. But I think uh, if they could clear up within 100 metres of that, it would help. Thank you. Um, as a footnote to that, I, I noticed the other day there was a report that there, some of the fast food restaurants are uh, in the process of developing um, the printing of registration numbers on the packaging so that when it's collected up, they can take further action. I hope that does come forward. Um, I've got Councillor Bowes, please. Thank you, but yes, very similar to what Mark was um, saying. I, as I noticed that you've said that you're, um, to the agent, that you've said you'll minimise littering in the immediate area, but um, what will you do to prevent it in the wider area of the town and the countryside around? Um, obviously, fast food outlets, particularly drive through outlets, contribute hugely to the rubbish that litters our countryside. And um, do you have any, so do you have any suggestions for how you will intend to responsibly help prevent this problem in the wider area around? Are you able to respond? Oh, thank you, the applicant. Thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon. Um, in terms of our existing uh, operations, we have daily litter picks throughout and bins uh, located on our existing site. So that would be the measure that we would intend to employ at this particular location. As for the, the wider um, amenities uh, countryside, I mean, we, we can only really deal with what's on the doorstep, which is the management of, of litter within, which I think is the, the main concern um, for what I'm hearing today. Sorry, can you answer your question through your microphone? Yeah, thank you. Do you have any plans for actually ed educating your customers more around littering and taking responsibility that way. Well, we have signage. I mean, in terms of um, the, the team members themselves, they do litter picks daily and the signage will be uh, so on, on the bins. So I think in terms of educating people, it's, it's by practice to make sure that uh, litter is uh, dealt with accordingly. I think you'll find any discussion with, with even with them, um, <laughs> Brecon's um, teams that clean the market towns every single night or in the early hours of the morning will tell you it's an it's a it's a big job every single day. I uh, can't remember the thing, the machine, a gut buster or something like it's called, that uh, gets full rather quickly. No, I saw a hand here first. Ah, Councillor Martin, please. Sorry, oh, we got one. I'm in between two microphones, sorry. Um, I've got a couple of points actually. Um, and firstly, I'm not against um, drive-through calf Street restaurant, which is a description of the development. Um, one thing, if I could ask the applicant, what will it be your operational hours for the premises? 10 a.m. for 11 o'clock, seven days. If, if, if I may just make one other point for Councillor Gilbert, the uh, proposal actually says uh, drive through restaurant, um, which is E class sui generis. So just want to make that point that it, there's no misrepresentation on the use. Thank you. Okay, I've got um, Councillor Kybird and then Councillor Atwell, please. Um, yeah, I visited the site yesterday morning. Um, there were nine large trade waste bins, and presumably that number will need to increase. 
but it doesn't show on the uh, plans as to where those existing waste bins will be stored and serviced. I thought we had a notification somewhere of, of waste bins. Am I right, Naomi? <coughs> I'll, I'll ask the applicant. Sorry, just to say, I mean, they're, they're uh, movable uh, bins that will be stored um, towards the rear of the, the properties. And just, just a point that along the back, in the back walls there, in those locations, could you, I don't know if you want to refer to the plan, that, but, but also just, to, just to, to pick up on the point, BIFA are our, our national um, carrier that collect our, our waste. So um, that's, that's the company that will be uh, picking up all the uh, waste. Rebecca, please. I think Naomi's about to put the plan up for Councillor Kybird and, uh, and others, obviously, but I think Councillor Kybird's point was there's already waste bins being stored on the site. So what will happen is they, the, um, the drive through restaurant will have its own waste storage. And you can see that just to the back of the building, that section to the back of the building um, with bins in it. And then the bins that are on the site, which I think you were concerned about, will then be replaced um, to the back of the specific units that they're serving. So to the back of um, Jolly's. If, if you put the bins to the back of Jolly's and Farm Foods, the 40-foot uh, articulated lorry will not be able to deliver goods to the goods to those units. So you, you can't just move them. Um, well, then, could we have a clarification as to uh, let's say, for instance, Halford or, or Farm Food and Jollies, where that allocated area is for their bins, even though they're not there at the moment. Yeah, I would remind you we're not assessing an application. Oh, mm -hmm. just, uh, I was just. Could you switch your microphone on, please? The bins all have wheels on, so they're able to be moved accordingly. They're not fixed, so they will be moved to make sure that they're not um, a hindrance. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Councillor Attwell, please. Okay, um, any further questions from members? Okay, I've got Councillor Plummer, please. No, I don't want that. Can you keep the on the please? No, next one. The the plan you just had out showing the bins. Right. Show the bins. Right. So here are the bins. Can you explain to me how the dust starts? It's going to get in there. It's going to be the wheel. When you've got a flower traffic on it. But that's not really very good. Anyway, I've got another question, please. Can you put up the roundabout, please? Now, you did say that highways are talking about these gentlemen having to put a high step in that roundabout. Yeah, don't. So is that going to restrict the Arctic lorries going to all the other? So why are you bothering putting a dome in if that's not... Going to stop anything. I think you'll find it's going to be slightly raised dome as against at the moment. It's it's a virtual well, it's yeah. a flat surface yeah, yeah. with with um with what should have painting, but you can see it's actually a very, very busy road that well that's always and been, yeah, and it it was previously a, a junction and and there was such yeah. a tailback that's why they introduced it as a mini roundabout, but it's lost all its um all its white covering. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to put a raised, raised but one. What, what advantage is that? Well, it it should it it should slow down the traffic, <laughs> ideally the the cars yes, yeah. that rather than go and 
it, in a tip maneuver would actually start to go around it. I've got a big four before, so I just go straight off the top of it. It yeah. doesn't worry me. Yeah, as we do. Yeah. So um, anyone who right. anyone who lives in the has got to watch out for me. Go on. There. <laughs> but uh, generally, it's the cars. Uh, any lorry who obviously can't manoeuvre around it will go straight Trapped over the top up. of it, okay. and it will not cause. I didn't a... know if that was a you know curb, curb if that's what I'm trying to get. No, at. I don't so think it's a... going to be a curb. I think it's just going to be a generalised doom, yeah. and not a curb. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we're all covered off. Everyone's okay. No further questions from members. Okay, this is it. Uh, on item three, three PL twenty twenty two oh five one seven F at Thetford. Your uh, officer's application and recommendation is one of approval. Can I show the hands for approval, please? Five, and those against? One, two, three, four, five, right, five six. six. Right, six against. Okay, so from the floor, could I have uh, your reasons to disagree with the officer, Councillor Atwell? Chairman. Uh I think this application be, should be refused on the basis I don't think it meets uh, the requirements of policy Colmo 3, protection of amenity. Uh, it fails uh, can we have, sorry, can we have clarification sorry. from Council then I'll take your Council Cabin. Yeah, I think it's protection of um, the uh, private amenity um, and for the We've got down here provision of adequate areas of usable and secluded private amenity. There's there's a whole list down here. Do you want me to be specific on one? There's one to eight items on Com03. Would you like me to read those out? Or do you want me to be very you prescriptive? You have it. Um, Go ahead, uh, Solicitor. I still got um, I think um I think on this particular occasion, it's, um, we probably should be quite specific as to what the COM03 issues are for the purposes of uh, any appeal that might be forthcoming. I'll take Councillor Kyberd then for a moment. Um, it fails to protect the immunity of the adjacent um, Jolly's pet food store in terms of access to its loading bay and it fails to protect the amenity of um, bin storage areas of the um, adjacent units and there being um, no alternative uh, storage space that would not com compromise deliveries. Okay, uh, uh, Councillor Gilbert, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I would also like to include over development of the site. Uh, Rebecca, please. Okay. Sorry. Um, so the loading and bin store reason that we heard would be a highways reason for refusal. Members, I would remind you, you have no statutory objections on highways grounds to those arrangements. Uh, uh, just um, the overdevelopment of the site members, if you agree with that as a reason for refusal, that could be a reason for refusal for this development. The amenity, we're gonna need some expansion. So we would usually say what amenity reason it is. So I would remind you that there's no objections from environmental health with regards to noise. There is an acoustic fence on the rear boundary that um, separates the highways movements from the drive through from the residents behind. So I'd say in terms of lights from vehicles, noise and disturbance from vehicles, separate to use of the building, um, which we would normally list as a reason for refusal, is mitigated by that acoustic fence. We have no noise um, impact um, as set out from the highways authority, uh, set out from environmental health. You have no odour impact in terms of amenity because you have no statutory objection from environmental health. So we really need to know what the amenity reason is that we're refusing planning permission on. We would have to defend that at appeal. So we'd have to explain to the inspector what the amenity impacts are from this development. Councillor Atterwell. Yeah. I also want to come back to Gen 02 because I do think that Gen 02 is relevant here. So 
we're talking about promoting high quality design. So it says the council will require high quality design in all development within the district that respects and is sensitive to the character of the surrounding area and makes a positive architectural and urban design contribution to its context and location. I don't think that this makes a positive contribution to this location. Then you've got contributes positively to the public realm of public spaces, protecting the high levels of amenity and quality of life, making Breckland an attractive, successful and vibrant place for residents, workers and visitors. Well, really, if you build this in the middle of a residential area, is that going to improve the lives of the Breckland residents while they're there? I, you know, I don't think Gen 2 is specifically about the actual um, how the bricks are laid and the thing actually looks it's about the wider context of the area and the effect that that design is going to have on the area so i do think that gen 2 should be taken into consideration as well but i would defer to uh planning officers and, and our solicitor on that but i do think that that's highly relevant yeah i'm, I'm gonna get Rebecca in because it's 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 a difficult one because it isn't an, an urban it's on in an urban center it's on an industrial area surrounded by basically brick and sheet clad buildings the, the probably the most attractive one is the glazing of Lidl or Aldi or whatever the place is called that's the most attractive building there so I don't none of them are going to win design awards so, and I think, I don't think, this is me personally, I don't think there's nothing wrong with the design of the, of the functional building that's going there. But, but I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure what building you'd put there that would enhance it. So let, let's hear what um, Rebecca has to say. I was going to say what you were going to say. Oh, um, I, I think Geno 2, if members agree that the building, the design of the building, the quality of the building isn't sufficient um, in their view, in their view, I'm going to say that in your view, right. sorry, that um, is not sufficient, um, then policy Geno 2, I think there are aspects of Geno 2 that members may wish to refer to. Um, I would repeat what Nigel's saying, when you apply Geno 2, you should look at the character of the area. Um, and it is obviously officers view that it does fit in with the character of the area, but Geno 2 certainly um, would be a valid reason for refusal along with overdevelopment, if members agree with that, in my view. One return, Councillor Atwell, then I've got Councillor Bowes. Yes, yeah, so I accept that there are retail units there, but we're talking about putting a fast food outlet in the middle of an area where it's surrounded by residential dwellings. So we're talking about what this actually does to the to the area and the character of the area and the effect that it has on the residents. That has a different impact to a retail unit because of the amount of traffic that you will generate because you're you're effectively directing traffic to come into this area. Um, again, I'll go to Rebecca, but I, I, I think that one has already been covered by the fact that there's this little Aldi um, unit there, which, I, which from what I gather, times I've been there, it's always fairly well serviced, you know, quite a lot of people there. You've got Halfords, Jollies, Pet Foods, Farm Foods, you know, who are all retail units. Well, well we're adding to it because that, because it is... It's not so much an industrial area as it's a retail area. And also, we I'm not sure if they ever acted on it. Councillor James might be able to help me. Is that we gave permission possibly a year or 18 months ago to, to a drive through car wash thing. And I'm not sure whether they ever done it there. They did. So we've got that. We've got drive through car wash. And I'm not sure about someone mentioned about a, a mini supermarket. And that's there as well. So there's a lot of things happening on that particular park. Um, which doesn't help the argument on the fact of 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 there there is traffic um, ongoing in and around that park. But I'm going to let Rebecca answer because I'm fed up of hearing from you. You're, you're straying, members. You're straying back to Como Three, <laughs> yes. saying there's an impact on the residential properties. So Geno Two is about the design of the buildings. So if you're unhappy with the look of the buildings then I'm suggesting to you, you could refuse the application on the grounds of Geno 2. You, 
the look of the buildings in themselves in terms of the character area in the street scene. Please remember members that right to a view is not a material planning consideration in the determination of planning applications, only the impact on the character of the area. In terms of the vehicle movements and the comings and goings from the traffic, that will be COM03. So there's obviously the highway safety impact, which is TRO1 and TRO2, which highways authority do not support you on and you're, they are your statutory consultee on these matters. With regards to COM03, we've just done that. That's your environmental health and they are your statutory consultees with regards to these matters. So you can refuse on Gen02, but it would be on the design of the buildings only, not the impact on the neighboring properties. You also cannot revisit the principle of having a drive through restaurant in this location because your policies very clearly tell you that they're acceptable in this location. And you've already heard that from officers. So Gen02 is the design of the buildings, not the impact on amenity. So members, if you want to add an impact on amenity, you can do that and it's in your right to do that. But we strongly advise you against that because you do not have the support of your statutory consultee in that regard. Councillor Bowes, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> can I suggest that it, um, this uh, doesn't meet the requirements of ENV 0205 and 06 either because of the um, potential impact on the, um, on the wider area of the BREX, um, uh, the, the, detri the, uh, the detrimental impact that, comes, that we know comes from an increase in littering from um, um, uh, mm. uh, applications such as these. Um, and uh, the effect that uh, that increase in littering in the wider area will have on the biodiversity and wildlife of the area. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, go on in, Councillor Gilbert, enlighten me. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think one of the reasons for the, we should refuse it for the impact on the area and the residents of the area is the opening hours. At present, we are told that the retail businesses there are closed by seven o'clock. Mm. Yeah. But, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, that I'm, was said earlier. I don't I'm know, puzzled but, by that one. But, Surely someone must know when Aldi Little yeah. close. But whatever it is, I think Cancer there's James? an impact on the area by the opening hours of the rest. Councillor James. Aldi is open till 10 o'clock at night, most weekdays, obviously different hours operate on the Sunday. Yeah, 10 o'clock. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson, please, we're gonna to have to get through this event. Yeah, I, I've got to come in on this, Chairman. Um, we, there's no planning policy objections. Um, this is contravening. We're trying to find excuses to match Gen 2. I believe this building will enhance that area. Looking at the buildings that's already there, and I use that area, I shop there. And um, the, the town centre, the um, Bedford Council, uh, very good intention. They are. Their objections are not planning policy objections. And, and a new company cannot be held responsible for antisocial behaviour there now and fly tipping and literary. Okay, we're gonna round this up. I'm gonna take Councillor Atwell and then we'll, we'll um, sort the vote from you, please. Chairman, just finally on Gen02, you talked about the design of the building, but that also means the layout of the proposed development. So therefore we're talking about not just what the thing looks like, you know, the bricks and mortar cladding, whatever, we're talking about the layout, which includes the drive through and the vehicles round it and the bin store and everything else. So on that basis, I think Gen 2 is the one that we should use to object to it. And I look forward to Burger King uh, building one in the middle of Narbrook, because I'm sure Councillor Wilkinson would love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to have a, a summary from, uh, from Rebecca, and then we're going to um, enhance your vote, which was from the floor of one of refusal so i think i think um in the debate and i'm not saying we've all agreed so but in the debate in terms of um reasons for refusal that we could defend at appeal what i have heard and please um is that you are concerned with regards to the application site in accordance with Geno 2, that the design and the layout of the buildings doesn't enhance the character of the area. 
it fails to enhance that, that the addition of the building would result in overdevelopment of a site, and that's evidenced within the lack of provision shown for the store for the displacement of bins and um, servicing areas for the adjacent stores. And on that basis, you would recommend refusal. Those are the defendable reasons for refusal that I've heard. Um, but I don't know if members would like to move that. Councillor Bowes, I'm concerned that we would be clutching if we tried to, because how would we directly delineate the litter to be from this Burger King in Thetford and not from another litter source? So I think we would struggle to defend that as a reason for refusal, in my view. Um, but the, the Geno 2 and the overdevelopment is something I think we could defend at, at appeal if we needed to. Um, is that acceptable, Mike? Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, from the from the floor, uh, your your recommendation, which was uh, put forward by Councillor Atwell, uh, one of refusal, I believe it was seconded by Councillor Kybert at the time. Thank you. Was one of refusal? Could I have a show of hands for the refusal, please? One, two, three, four, five, five, and those against. Six. So it's gone the other way. So take that again. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we need it. Right. So I'm. I'm. I'm say so sound seems a bit pointless, but can I have then a show of hands that we approve this item, please, at Thetford? A show of hands for approval. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. And those against. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Well, how peculiar. Never mind. No, no, no. Councillor Plummer. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I changed my mind no. because with all the evidence that was given, I thought that was the right decision to make. So That's very good. And if anything else, it highlights the, the action of the committee that when you can actually um, discuss further the items to the degree that we were having coffee at 11 and it's now 25 to 12. So um, a very na narrow margin, but uh, this item is approved. Thank you very much. Look forward to my free burger. Oh, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that while we were being transmitted around the world. I didn't really say that. But thanks very much. Thank you for your time, ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen. Um, I know we're getting nearer to lunch than we should, but do you mind if we just have a quick 10-minute break, starting at quarter to 12 by this clock?